Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, my high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, this video came with the video suggestions over on my Discord server, and it's from History Dose. And the topic sounds interesting. It's called First Contact, the Viking versus Native American Battles. All right, so I, I know you all know that the Vikings, you know, obviously predated like uh, Columbus when it comes to coming to the Americas. But one of the reasons that a permanent settlement didn't work there is battles and other complications basically led the Vikings to give up on North America. So what did those battles actually look like? That's what I'm hoping to get out of this video. And hopefully along the way, I can share what I know. All right, this video will be linked down below. Make sure you're supporting it and supporting History Dose. And let's get started. All right, I'm summoning my inner fighting wolf here. Let's go. I'm trying to remember if I've covered History Dose. Popular channel, very popular channel. All right, circle 1,000. Cliffs runs a winding channel, disturbed by a lone navigator. His a voice man sounds striking familiar. forward in a canoe meant for three. The eight companions with whom he set out have cool been arc. abducted by pale and bearded men, armed with radiant weapons and shields. The man reaches his village, tells them of the ambush, and then rallies a war party for the counterattack. His people are native to the land. Long ago, their ancestors abandoned the Eurasian landscape, braved prehistoric seas in the tundra of mammoths, and settled deep into a world hitherto untouched by humans. Truly amazing how there was these large civilizations this far north up in like modern day Canada, because you can't really do agriculture there. Um, so you're very much surviving on hunting. And you'd be like, man, it's so cold and all that up there. Why do people go down south? But I mean, I guess if you are able to survive those elements, you probably have like guess less less competition. As one age passed into the next, the bridge between the two hemispheres was broken. Like in the arts. Each style. half of the planet diverged in mutual ignorance of the other. Millennia bore witness to the cyclical death and birth of great empires, peoples and languages, prophecy and faith. The Vikings of Scandinavia, narrative, having ravaged time. Europe and established outposts on See, Iceland and Greenland, the age of Vikings. just interrupted tens of thousands of years of hemispheric estrangement. They promptly killed their eight Native American captives. This small band of Norsemen Thorvald. are led by Thorvald Eriksson. His brother Leif earlier made landfall on the American coast. But okay, so it's not, so yeah, uh, Leif Eriksson's the famous one, is at least being cataloged as the first, you know, pe person to come over from Europe um, there. Uh, but that didn't have long term, you know, consequences either. To encounter any native inhabitants. Now the swarm of indigenous canoes comes into view. The Vikings gather to their ship for cover. A staccato rain of stonehead arrows beats against their raised shields. After some time, the siege ends and the indigenous people paddle away. Longboats are so cool. But a fateful arrow protrudes from the trembling side of Thorvald Rip. Eriksson. He asks his men to lay him to rest in this foreign soil with a pair of crosses at his head and feet. After the captain's final orders are carried out, his men return to the American settlement founded by Leif Erikson and return to Greenland in the spring. What do you guys think? What, uh, let's think hypothetical here, um, alternate history. Let's say the Vikings had more success in North America and really, really attempted to stay and um, and to, to colonize. You know what I mean? And again, remember, this is like four to five hundred years before Right, the expeditions of Columbus and Cortez and all that stuff. What do you think would be the big difference there? Do you think you'd still have a similar thing with, you know, like the, the Spanish doing expeditions down, you know, further south? Uh, how how big do you think the timeline would be? Do you think you would see also, you know, the the disease epidemic break out? You would think that would happen. Um, I'm interested to know in the story if anyone knows about did the Vikings bring over diseases that Native Americans um, succumb to because we know that happens all over the place you know eventually right and and when the English come French come all that stuff um, and I'm talking specifically up here in North America but is there any uh, do we have any records of that is it just too hard to find in history 
Was there but indigenous records for that from Inuit communities and things? Soon there is another stir, a distant toll of iron and plumes of listless smoke. Dragon boats cruise along the water's edge. A man called Thorfinn Karlsefni has reached the Leif Dude, Erikson so cool. settlement, along with a party of nearly 70 Thorfinn. settlers, Christian and pagan alike. It seems divine favor has blessed the seagoing people with a beached whale from which to feed. By the way, this is a this is an interesting time period for, like I said, with um, Viking culture, where there was also these these conversions to Christianity. And I think one of the coolest time periods for this, you know, for like Viking history, was that time where you saw them try to kind of blend, try to blend like Norse mythology with like Christian doctrine. One of the coolest things I saw was at the uh, a Viking exhibit was um, it was like a, a, a crucifix okay, that you would wear as a Christian, but the bottom of it or the top of it was like a hammer of Thor. No, it would have been the bottom. The bottom of the crucifix was like a hammer of Thor and the top was a crucifix. It was like blending those two things. That was so cool. when I saw that them trying to blend those beliefs together. They settle warmly in their sod houses for the long winter. One day, out of the spring woods, people appear. Although frightened at first by the Norse bull, they soon open their packs to present warm pelts from the local fauna and gesture toward the Norse hey, weapons. Peace. Through Hello. guarded and fumbling attempts to communicate, Karlsefni makes yeah. clear that he will not trade his iron weapons. Instead, he offers the milk of their livestock. They would not. So multiple things, issues happening here. Um, there in North America, they did. They would not have had um, iron weapons for that. So it probably seemed pretty precious to them. Um, also, these people have never been exposed to cows. <laughs> uh, right. Cattle would not exist and milk. In fact, those people were probably lactose intolerant because um, they didn't grow up with ancestry of, of cattle. So probably wouldn't have been very useful. So trade, those wouldn't have been very good trade objects. Native Americans take delight in the strange beverage, trading all of their pelts for it. Then they disappear again. See, wouldn't Carl it? Stephanie orders his men to build a palisade around the settlement. Did I just get fact checked there? Because I know, like, I, I know people from the area were very lactose intolerant because of that. So and maybe they liked. I wonder if it long term benefit or if it would have been um, carrying a lot of germs that would have killed people. So we'll see. I might have got fact checked here. The people return in the fall in greater numbers with more pelts. In the tense reunion, one Native American attempts Love to pelts. take an iron weapon, and a Viking strikes him dead. Oh, jeez. The other Native Americans flee, but Carl Sefni anticipates retaliation. He sends out his Norse Man. warriors to lure them into the forest. Why'd I have to forest, go down like that? And then they ambush them. We could have been friends. Tomahawk and Arrow meet axe and shield. Damn. The Vikings scatter the Native Americans and leave a number of them dead in the woods. Carl Sefni's expedition remains at the settlement for the winter. Then they load their ships with American grapes oh, and pelts here. and depart. This story comes directly from the Saga of the Greenlanders, one of two Icelandic sagas that record the Viking settlement of Greenland, Leif Erikson's voyage to mainland America, and the Viking expeditions oh, to so the this is lands Green. they called Markland, Heluland, and Vinland. The other called Vinland the is what I believe they refer to as like North America. Eric the Red tells this same fundamental story with important differences. It combines the expeditions of Thorvald and Karlsefni into one, and records a massive battle in which Native Americans kill multiple fleeing Vikings, who are in turn only rescued when the brave woman Freydis scares off the Native Americans by beating her exposed breast with a sword. So this is uh, some of the story. If you um, saw if you guys follow Drawn of History, probably the best. If you're not watching, it's the best channel you're not watching. Um, I got to take part in, in in that, do some voice acting, great animated channel, and this was part of that story. So if you want to know uh, more, a lot more detail with that, I'll link it here um, as one of the suggested videos. After watch this, if you want to know about this story, yeah, watch that, and I'll I'll link it. Both sagas are the products of oral histories, probably first written down in the early 1200s. Each is clouded by medieval folklore. Yeah, Corpses okay. reanimate to give prophecies and disembodied voices probably guide the explorers. In Eric's saga, Thorvald is killed when a one-legged creature shoots an arrow into his groin. 
<laughs> These stories are the relics of the closing of an age. I used to be an adventurer. As Viking clans coalesce into kingdoms and the Scandinavian settlements in Greenland like. are abandoned. And the old tales of a short-lived um, quest to a western land are resigned to a compendium of rumor and fable to be told around the hearth or carried far by the traveling merchant. It's in Italy around 1340 that a monk relays what he's heard of Markland. Um, 1340, uh, plague just ended largely. I mean, still kind of going. Uh, interesting time for Italy who got just blasted by the plague. Further westwards, there is another land named Marcolata where giants live. In this land, there are buildings with such huge slabs of stone that nobody could build with them except huge giants. Oh. However, no sailor was ever able to know anything for sure about this land or about its features. So this is one of the surviving documents that, you know, obviously they messed up on a lot of it because it's not, like you were saying, he said it was 1300, 1340s. So that would have already been through... 300 years of oral tradition you can see how it gets screwed up that's how history works when you don't record stuff it's just it's like the game of telephone remember that as a kid and you'd whisper a message to one person they do it to another to another to another and then what inevitably happens is it gets messed up right so if you don't put things down into writing it's more easy to mess up so you could see why you know people were still ignorant uh, in europe to the existence of the new world because this doesn't sound realistic at all, and, and probably even for them sounded very mythological. In 1492, 1492, the Vatican records that no news has come from Greenland, Columbus that country the at the blue. end of the world in eight decades. Christopher Columbus reaches the Bahamas that same year. Scholars are left to doubt that the Vikings ever reached mainland North America. Until in 1960, archaeologists in Newfoundland they're finding more and more ruins. Excavations will resurface sod houses, an iron forge, and chopped wood recently dated to the year 1021. We are, we're finding out more and more that the presence there was bigger than we thought. There's stuff like all up and down the Canadian coast, too, not just at one site, but going all the, like all the way on eastern Canada, Canadian side, almost to like the um, I don't know if they found sites. If you have anything to share with that, it what today would be the United States of these Viking settlements. But I know for miles and miles, I don't know, hundreds of miles or whatever, up the uh, East Canadian coast, they're finding more and more of these uh, foundations. But just never long term. Here, the contemporaries of the Erickson brothers and Carl Sefni may have traded out or left. with indigenous people and launched expeditions possibly as far south as Maine or New York. By the way, I've said this about maps. I don't like it when the ocean or the uh, sorry, the uh, the ocean is dark and the land is light. Like, did this throw anybody else off? Because the mainland is the lighter color. I don't like that in maps. It throws me off. I, I need consistency. But after a handful of years, the mighty Vikings abandoned their colony, mysteriously retired from their Not efforts worse. to expand their domain westward in a bountiful country. I mean, they wanted, remember, they're, they're herders too, and, and, and they do like small agriculture and stuff. Like, that's why they liked England so much um, as different places. Um, you know, they want to live in a place, they don't want to live in as harsh of a place as like the native, you know, people from Greenland and North America were. They were looking for literally greener pastures. So a lot of them, uh, you know, end up going to what's today Normandy and France and, and all that stuff. They're looking for more of that arable land. The mapping of their expeditions reveals that the Norse had likely met the ancestors of the Beothic or Dorset Native Americans, mm -hmm. a people whose resistance may have been the death knell for these first European settlements in the Americas. Thus reads the saga of Eric the Red. Although the land was excellent, they could never live there in safety or freedom from fear because of the native inhabitants. Got their butts kicked, man. So they made ready to leave the place and return home. Yeah. Makes sense. So like it was good enough if to stay, America but had been spared the not wrath worth. of the Vikings, Europe hadn't been so fortunate. When I watched Vikings, merchants, and explorers from Magellan TV, I was blown away by both the brutality inflicted on Europe as well as the lasting impact the Viking era had on the world today. <laughs> What's that meme that was like the meme about uh Vikings attacking um like churches? They're like 
hey, this church spontaneously caught on fire and then the the monks mysteriously died and all the 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 loot and relics magically disappeared you know that meme you can go watch the documentary right now it has this really cool balance of present day sites of fabled viking raids alongside really quality cool. battle recreations all wrapped up in a great overview of who the vikings were cool all right uh check that out go to the original video you can see that maybe their code works this video is a little bit older but let me give you my final thoughts so as you can see with the the archaeology they're finding there's a lot more work to do but I, i'm seeing things very recent and when we're looking at arch when i look at archaeological findings like each year and try to see what's been happening recently a lot of what we're finding is viking stuff and it's really cool finding it all over the place it's just that they were bigger and more extensively extensive than than we ever thought but yeah the, i mean they hit the thing about why permanent settlements you know didn't work there and largely was they just were no match for the native groups there um they, yeah they had these iron swords and all this stuff but these are battle hardened people that are competing for land and you can see even for the you know how historically successful vikings have been with raiding and colonizing that of those places you know not like england or france or anything like that it was there in north america that they really met their match um, interesting when you compare those, you know, that with the the history of those other places. So um, I did ask a question. What do you think would how do you think timeline? What major timeline changes would we see? Do you feel like if if um, here and again about the 11th century Vikings were permanently successful at actually colonizing? What kind of timeline break do you think we would see? with that so um your hypothesis is good as any so uh, i'd love to see it down in the comments all right thanks again for the video suggestion again best place to do that is over on the discord server there's a um there's a channel there it says video suggestions that's the best place to you know get videos to my attention and uh with that thanks again for watching we'll see you next time